She going to eat all the food. Yeah, we're not making anything healthy, though. She going to eat it all the stuff. Okay, Slim Shady. Carry you. Get your suits tailored. The Chiefs have their guys back, Travis Kelsey and Chris Jones, and they take on the struggling Bears team in week three. Let's dive into the AFC West. So according to our analytics, the Chiefs have a 72% chance to win the AFC West, which is easily the highest percent chance of any team in that division. Despite being 0-2 this season, the Chargers come in behind KC at 17%. Are the Chiefs a lock to win the West, Wego? Yes. Chiefs are a lock to win the West. Why wouldn't I pick them to win the West? Look, I know that they haven't looked great. 15 still their quarterback. Travis Kelsey is back. They got Chris Jones back in the fold. If you trust anything in that division, you better trust the Kansas City Chiefs because you can't trust nothing else. You got Brandon Staley in Los Angeles who throws three passes in overtime. Two of them go out of bounds and lose to the Tennessee Titans. The Las Vegas Raiders, after Josh Allen throwing four interceptions, made Josh Allen look like the Josh Allen. We hope that he looks like the rest of the season. And look, Denver is fine, but Denver ain't, ain't that, that defense has fell off a cliff in Denver. I'm going to take Patrick Mahomes and Chief. I don't need to spend a lot of time on this. It's That's an easy yeah. one. How does anybody sit there and take Denver, the Chargers, or uh, yeah. or the Raiders? I mean, the Chargers stink. Yeah, they never win right. a big game. The Raiders just lost 38-10. And Garoppolo wins more games than you think, but still it's the Raiders. And Denver's 0-2, two, two games at home. Wilson and Peyton, are, they're not even at what, because they lost a game to the Lions and they didn't play great offensively against Jacksonville? This is a no-brainer. You want to tell me the Chiefs can't win the conference? I'll give you that. Not the division. The division. And this is an easy one. Yeah. Wow, who came up with this question? Was this a Stephen A? Oh, question? weren't you this in is the a meeting? Question. Well, Last uh, I checked, you were in the meeting. I know you. I know you. I know you. Is this your suggestion last night in the oh Wi Fi? Oh, my gosh. Me. Stay with me. Stay with me. I'm not trying to act like the Chiefs shouldn't be the favorite to win the division and we shouldn't anticipate it. What I'm just saying is I'm not considering it a lock yet for a few reasons. Number one, the receivers outside of Travis Kelsey. Number two, the absence of Eric Bieniemy, And number three, and more importantly, let me state this for the record on national television. I believe that the Chargers are going to come to their senses sooner than later and fire Brandon Staley as the head coach of the franchise. Now, I don't root for people to be fired. I want people to get their money. I want people to be able to take care of their family and what have you. But there are a comedy of errors to be able to take care of their family and what have you. But there are a comedy of errors that this man has made as the head coach of the Chargers. He's a defensive coordinator for one year in Los Angeles with the Rams, got the job with the Chargers, and Signature defense is just signature. That's how you got the head coaching job, and you can't get your team to play defense when it counts. You up 27 to nothing. You blow a playoff game. You sitting up there getting all sensitive with reporters asking this question whether or not residue from that game is what is affecting this team thus far this season. You got an offense led by Kellen Moore that's put up over 50 points in two games, okay? 34 and 24. That's a that's 58 points. He's put up over 50 points with zero turnovers, and still can't win the damn game because you got a defense that can't stop a cold when it really, really counts. And you have this man, Brandon Staley, somehow, someway, failing to have the pulse of his team. I believe if Eric Bieniemy was the coach of the Chargers, if Sean Payton was the coach of the Chargers, if other coaches, name them, were coaching the Chargers, they would not have been in the situation where they were in losing a 27 and up the lead in the postseason at halftime. They would not have been in the situation right now where they'd be 0-2. You got Justin Herbert with Mike Williams and Keenan Allen and Austin Eckler and these boys on the offensive side of the ball doing their part, and you got a coach in Brandon Staley. Single coverage against Tyreek Hill. Single coverage against Tyreek Hill. Come on, y'all. Now, we can have Come that on, conversation. I'm saying so to you, legit. all I'm saying to you, doggy and Swagoo, I don't think Brandon Staley's going to last because I think the Chargers, I think Chargers faithful folks in Los Angeles, assuming they care about the Chargers from time, and they should, okay, because when you got that kind of talent, you should. The bottom line is I think they're looking at this team and they're saying, you know what? Enough's enough. Yeah. We're missing yeah. a window here. Yeah. And it has to do with that damn head coach. So you think the coach that comes in is going to give them a chance to beat the Yes. Team? I got you. Yes. Now, there I, is no way yeah. they have um, – go ahead, you first. No, oh, I, I, I don't know what that who that coach would be. The I only, have no idea. The only coach I could surmise is that they would elevate Kellen Moore to being the head coach, bringing him in and the success 
that they have an offensively. I'm not a big Kellen Moore fan. Mm -hmm. I just I'm just yeah. not that guy. But but the thing is, Stephen, they still like when when the rubber meet the road in the AFC West, Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid is the best thing out of anything that's well, going well, on well, in that well, division. Well, and I'm challenging you on that because what I'm saying is Travis Kelsey with Andy Reid and right. Eric Bieniemy is the best thing going. We got but Bieniemy is no longer there. Yeah, okay. uh, Steve is way off. Yeah. Spanos is never going to fire Staley. He would have fired him last year, and then he could have brought Peyton in, but he didn't want to pay Staley off and then pay Peyton $10 million a year. Yeah. Right. So if your argument is, well, the Chiefs can't be a lock because the Chargers might fire a coach and bring a new one in, so yeah. you can't rely. That's a ridiculous premise. Okay. Yeah. Because they're not firing we gotta the coach. Go. Let me tell you, let me tell you what the premise is. That's where I'm let me tell you what the premise is. He likes to go to SoFi. They could have gotten a player that impacts the offense or the defense in a better oh, You know what? I'm stopping. I'm not even asking another question because this, this to me has become a fascinating conversation. I want to bring this to the desk. Swagua and, and Jeff and Kmart, I, I want to get what your guys' opinion on this is. I have a lot of close connections in Chicago, and this has become an extraordinarily interesting debate yeah. in Chicago amongst Bears fans. Is it Justin or is it everything else around him? So as we talk about it, Jeff, I want to show this tape first, Cindy. I, I want to show the tape that we've shown of Justin Fields. Yeah. So last two days, these are o both yeah. plays yeah. from this past weekend that are practically five seconds. The second one's going to be over five seconds. Yeah. And he winds up taking sacks. Yeah. He's got receivers open down yeah. the field. Jeff, explain to me why this is happening. Okay, so this is paralysis by analysis, mm -hmm. right? In his head, he's thinking, okay, what is my progression? Where do I have to be? Protection is good. But the problem with Justin is the decision-making and process has to be faster. And here's the other thing. Tom Moore, great offensive coordinator, Hall of Fame coach, used to say all the time, one, two, three, throw it away or head north and south, and, I mean, or head north. And so when you're talking about what Justin Fields needs to do is if you are paralyzed, you got to pull the ball down and go make a play. The worst thing you can have is a drive killer, which is a sack that sets you back 7, 8, 10 yards, and now you're behind the change and you're not going to make it up. But he has so much going on in his head right now, you can tell he's swimming, and he needs to just bring it back to, hey, if I don't see it, I'm a good enough athlete, and I'm probably one of the top players on this field. Go make a play for my team and live the next to, to play the next play. You see on your screen, they're playing Kansas City this week. I'll remind everyone, the Bears passed on Patrick Mahomes oh. to select Mitch Trubisky. Yeah. So this could be two quarterbacks they give up on at, at, by this stage if indeed that's where this thing is headed with Justin. Marcus, what do you see and where do you assign the blame? Yeah, it, it's tough because there's an issue with development at quarterback in Chicago, Amen. obviously. Thank you for saying yeah, that. Yeah, and then, then the other thing is, like, Justin got to – he got to take some responsibility. This league, if you're going to be a good quarterback in this league, anticipation is your strongest suit. Right. There is no quarterback in this league that can wait to see if it's open. Can't happen. Dudes like that waiting for you to wait. Like, yeah. You have to throw guys open. You have to find yes. windows. To a superpower is his accuracy and his anticipation. That's why he can play at the level pushing the ball down the field. So Justin has absolutely some blame. I think he's in this space right now of – I want to become a quarterback and legitimize playing the position the way everybody wants to see the position played. So I'm going to stay in the pocket and I'm going to try to wait until things develop. Because they're in this same game when he didn't throw that scene, he threw a beautiful shot to chase Claypool for a touchdown. Right. Right? Down the scene, in between coverage. So you know the ability is there and the ability to push the ball down the field. It's, it's something that is not unlocking and it's going to cost him yeah. an opportunity to continue to be a starting and, quarterback. And the, seam, and the seam throw that you're talking about, like, like that's that's not like that's not like level two, bro. Like, like that, yeah. Like as you see the city, I mean, like it, it, that ball needs to come out. So you can tell that that's his anticipation definitely has to get there. Here's the thing, though, Kmart. Yes, I, I'm not absolving Justin Fields of any of this blame. Clearly, we are seeing him struggle with some things. That he should, but if I'm Matt Eberflus, the head coach of the Bears, I'm telling my offensive coordinator Luke Etsy. If he doesn't run with the ball at least 10 times Freak. this week, Freak. you're fired. That's Freak. it. I'm not having this conversation. Yes. He ran the ball four times for three yards last week, and that's inexcusable. There is one thing we know he does about as well as any quarterback has ever done. Get out and go. And we're not letting him do it. We're not designing for him to do it. We are coaching against his strength. Mm -hmm. So, again, I'm not saying it's all on them, yep. but some of it has to be. Yes.
And it's funny, a couple things. I texted someone in Chicago and I said, I imagine Chicago radio is on fire. Yes. And he said, take the word radio out of it. Chicago is on fire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because of the, the two camps of this is all Justin, this is all the team. I, I struggle to understand in the preseason when, when people were saying, oh, the Bears are about to take a big leap. This is going to be, the Bears can win the division. Because you're looking at a quarterback who went to an organization, the front office that drafted him is not there. Right. right. Like, we talk about things take time. Russell needs time. These QBs take time. For sure. Well, Justin needs time to develop. He was a kid coming out of the draft that you understood he would need some seizing. He would need some time. And now you've changed the offensive system. This is the first time he's had the same system in back-to-back -back years since college. Now, he cannot hold on to the football for five seconds. Right. He has to throw guys open. He, we have seen this kid take hit after hit with nothing on the field to work with. And